Hello, I'm Holly Lindley, and I am back here with our expert panel, Roger, Chris, and Marianne. And I'd like to focus us on investigative questions that provide students opportunities um, to kind of compare two or more groups. So it's often at the middle school level, like ages 14, 11 to 14, where students first encounter these tasks um, that involve comparing groups. In the GACE or the SASE framework, um, comparing groups is kind of at that level B or the intermediate level of statistical reasoning. So why do you think um, having investigating questions that compare groups can promote inferential reasoning and that's an important step in this development of statistical reasoning? I think comparisons are something that we naturally do. It, it's yeah. something that we see everywhere. We, you know, uh, we want to know how our group compares to the other group. You mm -hmm. know, in uh, all of my classes, the students want to know how is our average compared to the mm -hmm. other other right. class, something right. like that. We're naturally curious about that. Absolutely, and I think that's uh, one of the things that uh, makes an easy motivation for the students to get involved in and to think about it and say, okay. Where am I, and how does my group compare to another group? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's right. I think back when we teach our introductory statistics course, you know, in college, and we are trying to introduce formal hypothesis testing, and I often wondered why are we spending so much time on making an inference about a single parameter, yeah. <laughs> like a mean or a, a proportion. Why, are, why don't we just start immediately with comparing means or comparing right. proportions as our parameters mm -hmm. because that's what we're really interested in in the real world. Right. Yeah. And so uh, I think starting it at the lower grades, mm -hmm. uh, especially in middle school, it, especially using a descriptive way of doing it, not mm -hmm. that you're going to formal inference, but descriptively comparing box plots or dot plots right. graphically for groups is just a, a very natural way to get them introduced to inference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the visualizations um, are more, you know, ro or you have more choices for how mm -hmm. you compare sets of data right. than comparing a sample to a po population. Mm -hmm. and the scaling isn't going to look the same, you know, for a population with a sample, mm -hmm. but you can get two sets of data that have roughly um, same amount of data it doesn't have to be the same. We know that. Right. <laughs> we right. want to highlight that. We want to highlight that. to be the same amount of data, but the scaling isn't an issue. You can see it. You can you can start to reason about it without doing any computations. So yeah, it's yeah. Well, and I think that we've seen a lot of research that um, even just as far as understanding um, the, the the nature of um, aggregated data and looking at a distribution right. as a right. whole, that if you put students in a context of comparing two distributions, now they have to be able to describe each distribution holistically mm -hmm. um, because they're comparing them. And particularly in the middle school, it really draws upon proportional reasoning. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of this key, yeah. you know, key point and hallmark going from a level A to a level B and then a level B to a level C. And Whatever. with box plots, it's so natural exactly. to use that proportional. That's right. That's a great representation for that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Or even being able to compare kind of intervals um, of data and saying, okay, well, so much percent of, of the data in this group is above or below so much percent in this group. So, um, so think about some of your favorite tasks that involve comparing groups. And I want to hear a little bit about that task and the typical ways that learners might engage in that task and what they um, may struggle with. So I'd like to start with you, Marianne. Okay, great. Um, so one task that is very popular with students as well as teachers um, that's been used, I want to say throughout the state of Iowa, it's it's pretty, pretty popular, it's spread uh -huh. like wildfire, is um, a task that can, has students compare how fast they are to other students and so they actually go on the Amstat website census at school and there's a reaction time um, applet that you can it's just a box basically and it changes colors and you click and it'll tell you how quick um, how quickly you identify that the box changed colors okay. and so students try it out a little bit at first just to make sure they've got the hang of it and then they collect um, I can't remember 10 to 20 data points I think maybe 20 um, data points and their peer does as well. And then they, they graph it and make a dot plot. Um, and we do this in Tuga Labs, uh, usually, or you could use Tinker Plots uh, for that data. And they determine who's faster, but we step them through, since it's middle school, we step them through finding a measure of center. They have to choose, is it mean or median? What makes sense, depending on the data distribution. Right. Um, and then the measure of uh, variation goes with that measure of central tendency. So 
MAD or um, uh, IQR, I guess it would be. So, so they kind of go through this progression and um, they talk about who's, whose central tendency is fastest, um, who's the most consistent, we use those words. Um, so we talk, say, what's your typical value? Who's more consistent? And usually somebody is kind of really consistent and somebody is not. Uh, so it usually works out, it doesn't always, like, but usually it does and um, it's pretty clear cut. Also, usually somebody's definitely faster than the other person. And uh, so they kind of, we step them through all this, it's their data and we use technology to display it. Um, versus doing it by hand and um, and then they conclude at the end who's faster or not um, and that's kind of the inference um, and they debate it they generally right. don't agree that it's representative of their speed which is I, I always find to be interesting um, so we talk about then well what would we need to do um, next time to or what, how could we modify this to really show right. you know that uh, will we ever know like if you're faster than I am will we ever really know that we can't, we yeah. can't ever for sure say um, say that, uh, but we can be relatively certain. So I think it's a great example of statistics versus math. So we're not proving that somebody's faster. Um, right. We're inferring it. Yeah. And um, that's a fun activity. And then you can aggregate the data. If they put it in Excel, these teachers can aggregate the data and they can later look at like uh, boys versus girls or different classes comparing. And so I've heard, um, even of uh, grades kind of being competitive. And so then there's teachers against students and uh, <laughs> teachers generally are slower as, <laughs> just a warning. With anything related to technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So youth plays a role, I think. Yes, but, yeah. Well, what I really yeah. liked about that example was um, that the groups that they, the, the things that they were kind of comparing was a repeated measurement. So this idea mm -hmm. of measurement variability, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Um, I really like that, 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 you know, that they are, um, they're comparing, you know, it's me against you, but the, yeah. the group of data that I'm looking at is my repeated measurements. Right, right. You know? Yep. So, nice, mm -hmm. nice, nice, nice. What about, Chris, Chris, Chris yeah. you want to give me? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about an activity that's actually been written up, and so I can give you a reference yeah. as to where you can read about it. Uh, it's called the Memorizing Words Activity. And uh, you can actually find it in mathematics teaching in middle school. I have my notes here. <laughs> the August 2008 edition. Okay. And the title of the article is Statistics in Middle Grades, Understanding Center and Spread. Okay. Um, but the memorizing words, is a, I, it turns out it's always a popular activity with whatever age group you use it with, be it young children, college students, etc. But basically, you have two groups. And in one group, you give them a list of words to memorize. Now, they're like three-letter words. Mm -hmm. And they're typical three-letter words that we use in our English language. Now, the other group gets a list of words. They're three-letter words, but they're nonsense words. Oh. They, they don't have any contextual meaning. And so you're given a certain amount of time to memorize those words. Then you take the list away, and then you are to write down how many words that you, you remember. That you remember. And then mm -hmm. what you measure is the number of words that you get correct. Okay. And so then what you go, you create distributions for the words that were nonsense words, the words that were not nonsense words, and then you go through the process of comparing the two distributions, mm -hmm. looking at your measures of central tendency and variability. What's really wonderful about this activity in the article, if you read it, is it talks about how, how at the middle grade level, do you talk about the notion of do you have a meaningful difference right. between the two distributions? And let's say you mm -hmm. want to compare the mean number of words or even the median number of words. So is the difference that you're seeing in the mean and the median meaningful? Mm -hmm. And that hopefully leads the students to bringing in that variability component and the role that it plays. And the emphasis at the middle school level is trying to do this graphically. So you, you could easily do this with box plots. You mm -hmm. can also do this with dot plots. Mm -hmm. But with box plots, once again, you're looking at that idea of how much do the box plots overlap and how much do right. they separate. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. you're, the more separation you have between mm -hmm. the two box plots, the more meaningful the difference. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so this is a way to introduce students at the middle grades level to this idea of informal inference. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I think it's a very powerful task. It's a fun task and it's appropriate for any grade level. Yeah.
Yeah, and the, 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 way, the way that they reason about the center and the spread is supporting their inference. That's and correct. And supporting their, their claim. That is correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like that. I like that. What about you? So, um, I guess one of my favorites goes to uh, the point where we're actually comparing two things, but they're not independent. So in the university classroom where we're looking at a paired situation versus independent situation, mm -hmm. uh, I like to introduce that by having a comparison of the dominant and off-dominant hand mm -hmm. in terms of strength. We've got a grip mm -hmm. meter that you squeeze it and it shows you how many kilograms Big difference of strength between have, mine. Right? <laughs> and we start that off by bringing up someone who's really big and burly and someone who's very small and petite and then say, okay, squeeze this and one, you know, uh, one is much higher than the other, uh, and we compare the dominant hand of the big person and the off-dominant hand of the small person and say, look, the dominant hand is much stronger. And they're like, wait a minute, that makes no sense whatsoever. You, that doesn't make sense to make that comparison. And then that brings them to thinking about, in a paired situation, you take out a lot of that variability by matching them up. And if you compare my left hand and my right hand, that's a natural comparison as opposed to comparing my right hand and someone else's left hand. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. that's that's one of the things that they really it really sets into them, you know, what's going on here? What's the context? Why is this important? Mm -hmm. And why is it important to think about the independence of the groups versus the dependence of the groups? Right, right. And do you take them to then looking at kind of the difference between the strength? Yeah, uh, so the next step is then to say, okay, let's measure on individuals within those individuals their dominant and off-dominant hand, mm -hmm. and then make the comparison that way as opposed to as independent groups. Right, right, right. And honestly, I think all three, I mean, nobody, we didn't explicitly mention high school, but all three of these activities mm -hmm. are absolutely appropriate absolutely. At, the high, at the high school level. Yeah. Non-AP non statistics. And at the uh, post-secondary <laughs> right. level. Right, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we want to consider is that even though comparing groups is kind of this really critical thing with level B, just because you're in college or just because you're in high school doesn't mean that you have um, a level C um, of, you know, reasoning of statistics. So right. you right. have to have those early experiences and comparing groups is a really nice way to kind of bridge that. Right. So, good. Thank you for sharing your tasks.